Hello everyone, how are you all doing today? I pray that you are having a blessed day. This channel is dedicated to hurting marriages. You may be a wife or a husband standing for your marriage. This channel is for you. It is through the divine leading of the Holy Spirit that you are here right now listening and finding encouragement. I truly pray that this blesses your soul. Thank you for being a blessing to me and my family. If you have not yet subscribed to this channel, I encourage you to do so, so that we can always be together every time I come on. My dear friends, these last couple of days, the Holy Spirit has been leading me to go back to the story of Abraham and Sarah in the Bible. Their story is very familiar to me. I have read and studied this before and God has spoken to me through their story. I have been standing strong in my stand with the promises that God has given me through their story. You see, my dear friends, Sarah and Abraham were given a promise from God. I will make you into a great nation and I will bless you. I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. Found in Genesis chapter 12 verse 2. A promise that they would birth many nations. But Sarah grew weary and very impatient, waiting on this promise from God. She watched days pass with no change, no baby growing inside her. She watched her husband grow older day by day. And probably she wondered how he too could still father a child at his age. And then the all-consuming need to satisfy her inner longings and insecurities elevated. It elevated to a very high degree to the danger zone. Familiar, right? I'm sure. I'm sure you have these too. I know I've had these in the past. No doubt the enemy was there whispering words of doubt in Sarah's minds, in our minds when we get to this danger zone. Things like, did God really give me that promise? Maybe God changed his mind. I'm not getting any younger. That seems impossible. What if God wants me to handle this? What if I figure out a way to fix it? Plenty of people I know have surrogates. Did I hear God right? Did God want me to do something? You know, my dear friends, because of our weariness, just like Sarah, who was getting really weary and impatient, her doubt in her allowed the voice of the enemy to get through her. This will happen countless times with us too during this season in our stand. That is why in 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 5, it says, We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take every thought captive and make it obedient to God. Sarah, on the other hand, did not know this. She was leaning towards her own understanding. So, she thought to take matters into her hands. I would like to think that she rationalized that God needed her help to make things happen. But not, my dear friends. We know that this is not the case. Or maybe she mistook the voice the voice that she was hearing, which was of the enemy, and believed it to be God's voice instructing her to do something. You see, we oftentimes justify these voices in our great want to make things happen, in 
our control. My dear friends, believe me, it will have to be all God. So what did Sarah do? She talked to her husband, Abraham, and convinced him of sleeping with her servant, and then they can take the baby as their own. Is this of God? Was this God's instruction? Of course not, right? I'm sure many of you can relate to how maybe Sarah then thought and convinced herself that God would approve of her plan and that the promise will then happen. I say this because I have been there and I can say that many of you too have been in this place or maybe are in this place right now. This is when you still think God needs your help. When you are still holding on very tightly to that control that you think you have. My dear friends, I plead with you. Do not manipulate the situation that you are in. I call this fishing. Stop it. Do not go fishing. Do not drop a line for compliments, for reassurances, for anything attached to your insecurities. Do not feed into the inferior feelings that you have in you. These fishing expeditions to see if God is making good on His promise are ultimately distrust, doubt, and actions driven by the enemy. Believe me, nothing good comes out of the pursuit of soothing our own insecurities, especially when those desired reassurances are to come from another person with a heart that is not in alignment with God. I have said this countless times and I will say this again. Our expectations should not be on man not our husbands, our spouses, or anyone else in this world. It only has to be on God. To expect on man, my dear friends, nothing, nothing good comes out of it. You will be disappointed. I totally get the reasons that you want to hear that God is moving. See that God is working in your situation. You want to know that there is still a chance. You want to connect. You want a moment of reprieve from the uncertainty, the struggle, and the pain. But my dear friends, fishing for the things that you want and manipulating before the timing of God to give them will only snag you a big old stump at the bottom of a very slow, very muddy, very murky river. Manipulating and controlling conversations to hear and make happen what we want may sound nice. It might sound enticing in the short term, but it opens a long-term connection to the enemy that, believe me, you do not want to happen in your life in your stand. Should you get what you want, what you are seeking for, for a moment, it will not last. But the door that you have opened for the enemy will be there. It will haunt you for a very, very long time. I imagine in Sarah's case, she must have spent the remainder of her days on earth in regret thinking, had she only trusted fully and waited on the Lord, then none of what had happened would have happened. Everything would have gone as perfectly as God had promised. So my dear friends, do not manipulate the situation. Stop it. Stop it and leave it with God. Because look at Sarah's situation. Did God keep His promise? Yes, of course He did. 
He is not one to lie. He did in his own perfect time. Fishing, manipulating, taking control is never good. God calls us to obedience and his instruction is for us to trust him. In other words, surrender it to him. As hard as it is to wait, it is the results of the waiting that confirms God's hands in the outcome. I've read so many testimonies and I have witnessed just as much of situations changing, changing literally from one moment to the next. My dear friends, know that God moves in the suddenly. And I think it is because there is no opportunity for us to help God when a suddenly happens. It has to only be all Him. It's His will to make it happen without any help, without any interference from us or anyone else but Him. The glory is all His. So, I encourage you, my dear friends, be in total surrender to God and wait patiently for the suddenly to arrive. Take your hands off the situation. Cast all control. Cast everything to Him. Be in total surrender and trust Him. He works in the suddenly and it will just suddenly come to fruition. I pray blessings over you, my dear friends. May God shine His face upon you and bless you in your stand. Remember, He is there with you. So God bless you all and have a good day.